if you'll take your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 119. Uh, it's about in the very middle of uh, the Bible. Actually, uh, Psalm 118 is the middle uh, chapter of the Bible. But Psalm 119 there, you'll, if you, if you kind of take your Bible and just kind of try to separate it right in the middle there, you'll come to, uh, pretty close to Psalm 119. It's 176 verses. I want to challenge you uh, this month. We're at the beginning of June. 176 verses. I'm going to encourage you, if, if you don't already have a, a daily devotional, and even if you do, uh, to just maybe break from that and just concentrate on Psalm 119. Now, again, don't try to, yes, you could read it in, in one day, you know, one sitting, you could read it, but, but to, to really study it. It's not about reading God's Word. It's about studying God's Word, about being devoted to God's Word so that uh, uh, you, you're really committing yourself to it. And I, I, you know, if you would, if you would take even three weeks, because there's basically Psalm 119 is divided up into 22 stanzas, and literary, using a literary term, 22 stanzas, eight verses each stanza, and that, uh, stanza, and that's 176 verses. And so, if every day you would just uh, focus on eight verses at a time, and I'm going to share with you real quickly here, just uh, I, I've kind of taken those 22 uh, sections and. And they're in correspondence to the Hebrew alphabet, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, but, but that you would just take those eight verses each day and just focus your attention on them. What, is, what are those eight verses telling me about God's word and about my devotion to his word? I'm going to give you uh, just a word, kind of a word theme for each of those stanzas. But first, I want, I want to read for you, first of all, the first two verses of Psalm 119. It says this, it's a, they're, they're, be, they're beatitudes, they're blessings, these first two verses. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless. I gotta, you guys got to get up here, my fault, my bad. <laughs> Is it up there? They were. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Those two, are, they're talking about devotion. Devotion to the Word of God, to have a passion for the Word of God, the, a passion to know who He is and that, that, that God has given us this, this precious Word to, to tell us who He is, to tell us more about our nature. You know, we, we, we think we kind of know ourselves, but, uh, you know, we don't, we don't know all there is even about ourselves, but God's Word tells us about our nature and, and uh, our, the struggles and, and, and but be, his, the, the plans that he has for us. And, and so, again, God's, you know, to be devoted, to, to seek him with all of our heart, to uh, keep his statutes, to walk according to his law. That, that, that needs to be our goal, our daily goal. And, and so Psalm 119, I, I want to I share with you a term. Uh, it's not in Scripture, but I, I've called the, my message here, Life's Greatest Fixed point of reference. A fixed point of reference. How, how many know what a fixed point of reference is? Right? A, a, a fixed point of reference is something that you can, you can go to uh, that, that will help you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a reliable, permanent marker uh, to retur- refer to for direction, for guidance, for information. Uh, a, a fixed point of reference is always something that is found outside of ourselves. All right? Uh, again, we always hear about, uh, I don't need any directions. I know where I'm going, you know, and I, I got it all right here. <laughs> right? Uh, this is not a fixed point of reference. It's not reliable, all right? I'm finding more and more uh, that my memory is not reliable, all right? So this is not a fixed point of reference. But a fixed point of reference is something outside of ourselves, separate from ourselves, and it has to be something to which we can always come back to. A fixed point of reference does not move, all right? You move, but the fixed point does not. So using that as a, that, that definition, probably the most common fixed point of reference we can have is that of true north, all right? A compass always points to true north. That is, uh, I mean, when you have a compass, it's always going to point north. And, and so there's that, that true, uh, before the compass, they used the north star. Again, it's a fixed point of reference outside of ourselves so that we could tell direction. Now, today in the great technology that we have, who knows what 
GPS means. Global Positioning System. All right? Again, you may not know much about it. You may not even know what those, word, those letters meant. Now you do Global Positioning System. This is technology. It's a space-based radio navigation system owned by the United States of America. Now, there's other ones, but the United States of America uh, is operated by the United States Air Force. It is a global navigation satellite system that provides geolocation and time information to a GPS receiver. All right, your your phone may be that receiver. You may have a, a, a another one. You know, but it, 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 and so that anywhere on or near the Earth, where there is an unobstructed line of sight to four or more GPS satellites. Now, there's actually a, 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 a I don't know the exact number now because I think it changes, but uh, in the research I did, it, it said 24 satellites. But you have to you have to be able to have you know sight to four or more for that. And it's accurate within five meters. Accurate within five meters that, that you know, where you are at. All right. So again, I don't want to get bogged down in technology, but it's all about that understanding of fixed point of reference. And I want to share with you today that the Bible, God's Word, is the greatest fixed point of reference. It is outside of ourselves and it will, it gives us direction, it gives us guidance, it gives us information, and it is accurate, accurate even better than a GPS. God's word is accurate for how we can live and we can live in victory. And so I want you to just understand that the God's holy word, uh, you know, Psalm 119 here, uh, you know, highlights the word of God. 176 verses, and, and again, there's other verses that you can go to, but right in the middle uh, uh, of God's word, Psalm 119, uh, 176 verses that just tell you uh, just how powerful, uh, how uh, much of a treasure God's word is, and just encourages, again, the blessing, the blessing for those who, who are, are devoted to it, who, who walk according to it, who, who keep uh, in obedience uh, the, the commands, and who seek God. Who God with all of their heart. And so, uh, again, I want to share with you now real quickly, and again, the notes are there. You can fill these in. I'm not going to spend more than a few seconds on, on each one of them, but these, it breaks down the 22 stanzas, and it shows that God's Word provides fixed points of reference for specific needs that we have, specific, uh, I don't want to call them topics or themes. Uh, and again, these are just mine. All right, when you, when, when you read these uh, eight, verse, eight verse stanzas and, uh, you, you, you know, you, something else may jump out at you, uh, but that's why I'm encouraging you. I'm challenging you for the next 23 weeks, for the next 22 days that you'll look at Psalm 119 and you'll study it. And I guarantee you at the end, you know how it says, that, you know, how, how do you start, how, how do you maintain a habit? How do you make, uh, uh, make uh, uh, something a habit? 21 days. When you do something for 21 days, that uh, you'll make it a habit. You'll make it a habit. And so look at Psalm 119 these next three weeks on your own and, and make God's word a habit in your life. So again, there's, it, it, it's the eight, eight verses at a time, these, sta these stanzas. And so let's begin. The God's word provides a fixed point of reference for a steadfast foundation. A steadfast foundation. Verse 9 says, Oh, at my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. The psalmist, that was his prayer. That was his cry. You know, that he, needed, he knew he needed a steadfast foundation and that God's word was that foundation. The next stanza goes on. It provides a fixed point of reference for purity. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. A question asked, a question answered. How can a young person, and you know what, how can any person, how can any person stay on the path of purity and it's by living according to the word? You know, there's, there's adults that are more immature than, than kids nowadays. You know, and when it comes to purity, like one of the questions that I think uh, that we was picked out of the, uh, that was, was about marriage, you know, and, and uh, I mean, we're, we're, this world has gone so off the path 
of purity when it comes to God's design for marriage. But again, by living according to his word. Again, we're going to be quick through all these. Third stanza that gives us a fixed point of reference for delight, for joy. He says, your statues are my delight. They are my counselors. You know, when, when God's word, you know, so many people, the world looks at the Bible and like, oh, the, you know, a bunch of commandments and uh, it, it, the Bible's a kill joy. No, the Bible is the source of joy. God knows what is going to give us true joy and delight. And, and that as we walk according to his word, we are going to have uh, the, the greatest of joy, the greatest of delight uh, as, again, as God's word counsels us. And that we get, uh, we get that, uh, that good, great, correct counsel from God's word. The fourth stanza goes on and says, it gives us a fixed point of reference for strength. Verse 28, my soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Again, you need strength. We all need strength. You know, yes, maybe physical strength, but just that, 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 that strength in our soul and God's word. God, God's word provides it. The next stanza tells us a fixed point of reference for direction. For direction. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. There I find delight. You know, there are so many people. I just want to take a, a little, a few more seconds on this one. So many people that are misdirected, misguided, and they've ignored the word of God. Even in the church, believers, Christians. That, that, that uh, you know, they know God's word, but they, they, they still convince themselves, well, I think I know a little bit more than God. You know, I, I think I know what's best for me. And again, so many, what happens when we're misdirected, when we're misguided? I don't know if you've heard this one before, but Horatio Hornblower was a captain of the 7th Fleet flagship, USS Missouri. He ordered his signalmen to radio ahead his directive when an obstacle appeared on the radar screen directly within his course of navigation. He told, the, he, he, he told his, uh, uh, his, his Navy man to tell them to move 20 degrees starboard. Well, an abrupt answer returned, you move 20 degrees starboard. Hornblower got a little angry. He got a little angry, and he, so he raged to his associate, doesn't he know who I am? Tell him again to move 20 degrees starboard and that I am Captain Horatio Hornblower. A second answer came in. I'm Seaman Second Class Jones. You still need to move 20 degrees starboard. Hornblower now enraged, I mean almost losing control, ordered, this is the battleship Missouri. We can and will blow you out of the water. Move or else. Seaman Jones replied back, this is a lighthouse. Of course, that settled the matter. There's no way a mighty battleship can even win a contest with a lighthouse. Again, sometimes when we insist that I'm going to go in my direction, regardless of what God's word tells me and shows me, you know, we end up crashing and burning. Crashing and burning. And, and so we, we, we need to know that God, he wants, to, he wants to give us direction that's going to keep us safe. He's not, he, he's not giving us direction just to say, hey, I'm in charge and, uh, you know, do what, I, uh, do what I say. He knows it's for our own good. It's for our own good, for our, you know, our joy, uh, for our, our delight, and, and so that uh, we, can, we can enjoy what God has created us, has created us for. So direction is a, a, another fixed point of reference that God's word provides. Next, we see hope. Hope. Verse 43 says, never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I've put my hope in your laws. Again, this world needs hope. This world is hopeless, and God's word is a fixed point of reference for hope. The next one is comfort. <coughs> Verse 52, I remember, Lord, your ancient laws, and I find comfort in them. People... You know, they're looking, they're, they're, they're looking for comfort and looking for comfort. And all. we think uh, the, the more luxury that we have, the more comfortable we have. You know, God, as, as we're content with his word, we're going to be most comfortable, most comfort. The next one as we go through here is promise. The next stanza, the fixed point of reference is promise. V verse 58, I have sought your face with all my heart. 
Be gracious to me according to your promise. God, standing on the promises. We're singing that. It's not just a song. Standing on the promises. God's promises are a fixed point of reference that we can trust. We can trust in his promises. His promises never fail. And when we stand on those promises, we will not fall. We will not fall. The next, uh, the next point or fixed point of reference that we can see is that of wisdom. Verse 66, the psalmist says, Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. You know, we need wisdom. In the New Testament, God's word says, that If any of you lacks wisdom, ask, and it will be given to you. And God gives us his wisdom through his word. That's why daily, read God's word. Follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I trust in the Holy Spirit. We're going to be talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit next week uh, to celebrate Pentecost. Uh, but the Holy Spirit, I believe, will direct you in, into God's word. Sometimes beyond your devotion, you know, your regular devotional guide that we provide and stuff like that. But, but just sometimes the, the Holy Spirit will take you to another verse. And I guarantee you, He's taking you to that verse. He's taking you to that passage because it's going to come into play that very day. I believe it. I believe it. The Holy Spirit knows what you're going to be facing. And so we, when we lack wisdom or we need wisdom, God is never late in giving wisdom. He will give it to you early as you look into his word and you study his word. Next one is righteousness. Righteousness. Verse 75, I know, Lord, that your laws are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. And again, we need to understand it's not about making ourselves self-righteous, but it's knowing the righteousness of God, putting on the robe of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. We are not right, but Jesus Christ is, and he gives us his righteousness. The next point, fixed point of reference that we can see is perseverance. No, I skipped one. Patience. <laughs> Patience. Sorry, now you've got to scribble it out if you, if you use pen. Patience. Verse 86. All your commands are trustworthy. Help me, for I am being persecuted without cause. Sometimes, you know, it, it's going to be challenging, this life. And we need the patience of the Holy Spirit, and we need the patience that God's Word will provide, that fixed point of reference. Now we have perseverance. Perseverance. Verse 93. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. God will give us that perseverance, that, that, that he, 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 will, uh, he will preserve us, he will watch over us, and we just need to persevere. We need to trust in him, trust in him and persevere. Never forget his precepts, never forget his word. Next one is prevention, verse 101. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. God's commands are for prevention, all right? He doesn't want to condemn us. Uh, he, he, he's trying to show us. He, it's a warning to prevent us uh, from going down the wrong path. And, and so, uh, again, that fixed point of reference that God's word is will help prevent, will help prevent uh, us from defeat and, and from conflict. Next one is illumination, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Illumination. You know, just the, the light of God's word. We live in a dark world. We live in a world that is blinded and needs the light of God's word, the light of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, uh, you know, God's word is going to shine on your life and going to show you, uh, you know, that direction. And that there's going to be darkness all around, but God's word is going to be just like that, uh, that, that flashlight that, that will light up what's in front of you. You don't need to worry about what's behind you, but just have God's word there at the front. Illumination. Uh, next is integrity. We're over halfway there. We're getting down to the end here. Integrity. Verse 113. I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. We need to understand that as believers uh, 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 in Christ and that God wants us to be as his children, that, that we need to pursue integrity. We need to be single-minded. We need to be trustworthy. And, and that uh, uh, we need to have nothing to do with double-minded uh, people and, and the double-mindedness of the world. 
uh, but to, again, God's word will, will give us a, a fixed point of reference to be people of integrity. Next, next one is discernment. It won't go. There it is. Discernment, verse 125. I am your servant. Give me discern. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. Here's where, you know, we like to have it black and white. But we understand in this world there's a lot of gray areas. There's a lot of gray areas. But we, uh, we, we need to understand that God's word is the black and white and it covers the gray areas too. He gives us discernment. If God's word doesn't specifically talk about something like marriage, keeping the marriage bed pure, uh, you know, the, his, his guidelines will give us the discernment that we can know even where the world tries to gray it up that, that, that uh, it's still God has a, a, a direction that is one way, one way, and that's going to lead us to victory. So discernment, God's word will give us discernment. A fixed uh, point of reference, mercy. Mercy, verses one, verse 132 says, Turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. Those who are devoted to the Lord, they're mercy. God's mercy is always there, and that, mer- that fixed, point of mer- re- fi- fixed point of reference is that of mercy. Fulfillment, the next stanza. I don't know if my pad's going bad or something, but it's not letting me go. So fulfillment, you'll have to do it for me. Fulfillment, verse 144, your statutes are always righteous. Give me understanding that I may live a life of fulfillment. God will fulfill uh, the desires of your heart as you pursue him and as you seek him. And next we go to assurance. Last few stanzas here. Psalm 151. Yet you are near, Lord, and all your commands are true. We have that assurance. God's word will give us assurance that we can trust these fixed points of reference. And, and, and that uh, uh, we, we, we can just know. We can have confidence and assurance as we follow God's word. Last three here, perseverance, uh, per, preservation, sorry, we already had perseverance. Preservation, preservation, verse 154. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. God will preserve us. He will protect us. And then next to last, verse 165, great peace. One, verse 165 says, great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. That, that's a highlight verse right there. All right? Uh, of all the verses there, there's a highlight verse. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing, nothing can make them stumble. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. And then I love the last stanza, the last verse of Psalm 119, forgiveness. Verse 176, the last verse, I have strayed like a lost sheep, Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Here's, a, here's that picture of the great shepherd. And, and here's the psalmist admitting, even with God's word, he, 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 even uh, with the power of God's word, that we stray. I have strayed like a lost sheep, and his request, seek your servant. He's saying, God, seek me. Seek me. And he says, because I have not forgotten, I have not forgotten your commands. How many know we can have the directions, we, we can have the directions to a location and what we still can get lost, right? We can get confused. Uh, we, 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 can, uh, we can miss a, 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 you know, a turn and, 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 and we stray. We stray. God, as again, his, by his mercy, by, uh, he's saying uh, that uh, even with the directions, he knows that we're going to have missteps. We're going to have missteps, uh, but we know that God forgives. And, and, and the promise that we'll not forget God's commands. That's the great thing. That's the one thing I want you to understand about God's word. When you pursue and devote yourself to God's word, you will not forget it. There's, there's something supernatural. This is not just a, another book. This is not just a, 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 another story, another novel uh, that you read and, and, and uh, uh, you'll forget. God's word, there's a, there's a promise 
and, and there's a power about God's word uh, that even when we, we get lost, even when we stray, that, that, that God's word is still, uh, as it's been planted in our life, it, it, it's going to come back. It's going to come back, and we know that God, his forgiveness, his forgiveness is there. And when, so we, uh, you know, as, as I kind of wrap this up here, uh, you know, if, if, if you've never made a pursuit of God's word, start today. And, it, 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 maybe you have, and, uh, you know, let's, let's face it, sometimes we can, uh, we, we, we can just kind of go through the motions without even thinking, huh? You know, we, uh, we, we can do something and, and we can say, okay, I did that, got that habit out of the way, and, and, and did it do us any good? You know, we, 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 need to, uh, we need to find that place where God's word is our focus and, and that, uh, that, that we, uh, we, we, we keep it in focus. We keep it in focus. We understand salvation in this life and assurance of eternal life are found in God's written word and in God's living word, Jesus Christ. And we need to keep his word and Jesus always in focus. On April 3rd, 1970, the flight of the moonbound Apollo 13 suffered an onboard explosion that crippled the spacecraft from its intended mission. Maybe you've seen the movie Apollo 13 that dramatizes it. And it put their safe return in very doubt. Very doubt. The astronauts' survival depended on correcting a return trajectory that doomed them to skip off the Earth's atmosphere and perish in space. They had to correct their entry into the, the Earth's atmosphere. With insufficient battery power, Commander Jim Lovell could not rely on the sophisticated computerized navigational instruments to realign Apollo 13. So he had to fly the ship for a 14-second manual burn while keeping one fixed point of reference in the crosshairs of the spacecraft's small window. That fixed point of reference was the Earth itself. That's all he had to guide himself. That he, had to, he had to keep that for 14 seconds manually, manually steering the, the spacecraft. And, 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 keep, and it was difficult, it was hard, uh, and, and, but it, it, their life, their lives depended on it. Their safe return depended on it. If they did not get it right, if they did not get it right, they were not going to be able to return. And it's all about keeping, he had to keep the focus on the earth there. We need to keep the focus on Christ. We need to keep the focus on God's word. And, and so I, I don't care what age you are, these kids that are here uh, today, you know, the, understand the value of God's word. Parents, understand the value of God's word and the promise and the, the, the power of God's word. God's word will not fail. Will not fail. I speak as a pastor uh, over 30 some years and still uh, it, 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 it amazes me that, uh, that as I have counseled individuals and, and, and when uh, we, we look at God's word and, and then, uh, you know, I meet with them and, and go over a specific area of their life that they need to, you know, they're trying to correct, they're trying to deal with. And, and, and when they go away and then they come back and they say, well, pastor, things are still the same. I'm like, well, did, you know, did, well, no, I, I tried it my own way. And, and they're, they're, they're surprised that it didn't work. You know, but God's word is powerful. God's word is perfect. We are not perfect, but God's word uh, will, will, uh, will, will take us in that right direction. It will take you in, in the right direction. And so to the kids and especially uh, to the quizzers, I just want you to know this, that all the, all the, you've been studying now maybe for a few years, maybe this was your first year studying. The promise is you'll not forget God's word. You'll not, and, and I, I hope you don't stray, but I know the reality of human nature. You know, sometimes we do, but God's word, you'll never forget. There'll be moments, there'll be times when, uh, when the Holy Spirit's gonna bring back some of those verses that you quoted here today. And, and yes, we had fun here today, but just understand the depth and the power of God's word. And, and, and again, for those of you that are, not eligible to be in junior Bible quiz because you're much older. You can help out and be a volunteer, and I guarantee you, you'll learn 
a lot. But I just encourage, I challenge you, whatever you have to do to embark on a, a devotion and passionate study of God's word. Of God's word. It will, it will be valuable and it will not disappoint. It will not disappoint.